हेलो एवरीवन हाउ आर यू ऑल आई होप दैट ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग अमेजिंगली ग्रेट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेलकम टू दिस सेशन एंड आई एम योर मैथमेटिक्स टीचर कुंदन मांगड़ इन दिस सेशन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू बी लर्निंग अबाउट पैराबोला बेसिकली वी आर स्टार्टिंग अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर इन मैथमेटिक्स विच इज कोनिक सेक्शन विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ कॉर्डिनेट ज्योमेट्री सो इन कॉर्डिनेट ज्योमेट्री यू मस्ट हैव लर्न अबाउट स्ट्रेट लाइन then circle and this is the third part which is conic section and in this conic section we are going to be learning about parabola ellipse and hyperbola in great detail about their properties and everything because this is a very important chapter for jee mains jee advance as well as boards point of view okay everybody so without any delay let's get started for this session first of all what are going what we are going to be learning in this session so in this session we are going to be learning about general definition general definition and equation of conic okay what is the general definition and equation of conic how do we get to know whether conic is representing equation is representing which okay shape whether it is circle or parabola or hyperbola or straight line will be learning in this section then we are going to start parabola okay then we are going to start parabola with standard equation of parabola standard equation of parabola okay everybody so let's get started shall we start the chapter now definition of a conic so a conic section or conic is the locus of a point locus is what path traced okay so parabola is what parabola is a path ellipse is what a path hyperbola is what it is a path circle is what it is a path straight line is what it is a path right so a conic section or conic is the locus of a point basically path that is traced by a point which moves in a plane such that its distance from a fixed point is in a constant ratio to its distance from a fixed line not passing through the given fixed point this is the basic definition of conic let me explain you this definition so what are we saying that there is a point there is a moving point okay let's call that moving point as x comma y or you can call it as h comma k there is a moving point which is moving in such a way that its ratio of distance from a fixed line there is a fixed line there is a given line which is ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 okay there is a fixed line and there is a fixed point and let's call this point as uh, a comma b okay now this fixed line is known as directrix this fixed line is known as directrix this is a new term you need to remember and this fixed point is known as focus okay now let's call this point as p let's call this point p focus is always represented by s okay so from the point p we are drawing a perpendicular on the fixed line so this is this is the distance of point p from the fixed line and sp is the distance of point p from this fixed point so sp by pm okay let's call this distance spm so sp by pm is equal to constant this is the condition in which this point is moving that the distance of the point p from the fixed point and distance of this point p from this line sp by pm this ratio is constant okay now what is this constant this constant is represented as eccentricity we represent it by e okay i'll be giving you all those definition in the next slide i'm just giving you a quick trailer what are we going to learn so this constant is known as eccentricity for different different values of eccentricity we are going to get different different curve okay so sp by pm is equal to constant this is the definition of a conic a point is moving in such a way a point is moving in such a way that its ratio of distance from a fixed point to a fixed line ratio of distance ratio of distance of p from the fixed point that fixed point is s which is known as focus and distance of this point from a fixed line which is pm okay 
that ratio is constant that ratio is fixed and depending upon the different different values of e we are going to get different different curves this is the general definition of a conic okay so all these important terms have been written over here the fixed point is called as what focus as i told you the fixed straight line is called as directrix the constant ratio sp by pm is called eccentricity of the conic generally denoted by e this is known as eccentricity which is generally denoted by e okay now few more important terms about a conic a line through the focus and perpendicular to the directrix is called the axis or axis of symmetry of the conic okay axis is that line which is basically you know dividing that conic into two equal parts basically this is the line on which the conic is symmetric okay so the definition of axis is axis of conic is a line which is passing through the focus this line is the axis of this conic so there is a general conic which is parabola suppose we take an example of a parabola so for this parabola this is the axis of the parabola this is the axis of the parabola now what's the definition of axis axis is the line which is passing through the focus as we can see that this is passing through the focus and it is perpendicular to the directrix it is perpendicular to the directrix the point of intersection of the conic with its axis is called as the vertex the point where this conic like this parabola intersect the axis this point is known as the vertex of the parabola this point is known as the vertex of that conic okay now a chord perpendicular to the axis is called as the double ordinate double ordinate is a chord which is perpendicular to the axis this is the axis if i make any chord which is perpendicular to that axis that chord is known as double ordinate double ordinate do in short and there is a very famous double ordinate in particular the double ordinate through the focus is called as the later sectum a double ordinate which is passing through the focus okay a double ordinate which is passing through the focus this is known as the later rectum of the conic this double ordinate is known as the later rectum of the conic okay clear now let's talk some more about eccentricity and the general definition of conic so depending upon the values of e we get different different conics if eccentricity is equal to 1 it is going to give us a parabola if eccentricity is greater than 1 it is going to give us a hyperbola and if eccentricity is between 0 to 1 it is going to give us an equation of ellipse okay so depending upon eccentricity we are going to get different different curves let me explain that to you i can give you the feel of this first part which is parabola if eccentricity is equal to 1 eccentricity is what sp by pm this ratio is known as eccentricity correct if this ratio is equal to 1 okay if this eccentricity this is eccentricity and if eccentricity is 1 then what are we getting then we are getting that sp and pm are equal to each other correct sp and pm are equal to e each other so basically let's say that this is the let's say that this is the fixed line this is the directrix okay and there is some focus over here this is that fixed point this is known as s okay we represent this fixed point by s this is the directrix and there is a point p now we are moving this point p in such a way that its distance from focus and its distance from directrix this ratio is 1 basically sp by pm is 1 in case of a parabola so basically sp and pm are equal so we need to move this point p in such a way that this distance and this distance are equal so in what manner this point p can move this point p will be moving in a parabolic manner it will be moving in a parabolic manner okay 
लाइक एनी पॉइंट इन ऑन दी पेराबोला यू टेक एनी पॉइंट ऑन दी पेराबोला सपोज यू टेक दिस पॉइंट इज डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम दिस लाइन एंड इट्स डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम फोकस अगेन सेम यू टेक दिस पॉइंट बेसिकली दिस पॉइंट इज गोइंग टू बी द मिड पॉइंट ऑफ फोकस एंड दिस पॉइंट बेसिकली दीज टू आर अगेन सेम ओके सो इफ वी कीप एक्सेंट्रिसिटी एज वन वी आर गोइंग टू गेट अ पैराबोलिक कोनिक and if we keep eccentricity greater than 1 we are going to get hyperbola this is really tough to imagine so let's not try to imagine this second and third part but yes you can easily imagine the first part so three things you need to remember if eccentricity is 1 it's parabola greater than 1 it's hyperbola eccentricity between 0 to 1 it is going to give one give us an equation of ellipse okay everybody now how to get the general equation of a conic so if we try to find equation of conic with focus focus is given as alpha comma beta directrix is given as ax plus by plus c equal to 0 suppose they have given us focus they have given us directrix and they have given us eccentricity as e if these three things are known that what is focus what is directrix what is eccentricity if we know about these three things we can derive the equation of that conic correct that's the idea that's what we are going to do over here that sp by pm is equal to e this is the definition of conic so sp square barabar e square times pm square basically we are squaring on both side we are doing squaring on both side now guys few things you must know that what is sp s is the point alpha comma beta we have considered that moving point p to be h comma k sp is the distance between these two points we can easily write the distance between two points as under root of a uh, difference of x coordinate square h minus alpha square plus k minus beta square right this is going to be sp we can write the value for sp square S sp square will be the square of it okay what is pm pm is when you put this point basically distance of point p from this line ax plus by plus c equal to 0 so in the chapter straight line you must have learned how to find the distance of a point from a line yes you have seen that so to find the distance of this point from this line we are going to put this point in the equation of line so modulus of ah plus bk plus c putting the point in the equation of line divided by under root of a square plus b square yes this is sp this is pm let's put these values in this equation so what do we get see if we put these values in this equation we are going to get a equation of two degree in terms of x and y in the end replace h comma k with x comma y okay or from the start you can assume the point as x comma y only or in the end you can replace the point h comma k with x comma y okay so again let me clarify this thing that sp is what sp distance between x comma y and alpha comma beta is going to be under root of x minus alpha whole square plus y minus beta whole square this is sp so this will be the sp square x minus alpha whole square plus y minus beta whole square is equal to e square times pm square pm square is going to be ax plus by plus c under root a square plus b square this is pm this is the distance of point p from this line you put this point in the equation of line divided by under root a square plus b square so this is pm square now when you expand these things see alpha beta are what constants e is what it is a constant there will be some ratio whether it is 1 or 2 or 1.5 or 0.5 whatever so e is given okay so basically we are getting a two degree equation this is a two degree equation two degree equation in x and y yes so what do we do with that so this is the idea we are getting we are getting an equation in two degree in terms of x and y so a general two degree equation in terms of x and y there are going to be few terms there will be a term of x square yeah right there will be a term of x square from it there will be a term of y square from it when you expand all these things there will be a term of xy in that 
Additionally, there will be a term of x, there will be a term of y, there will be a constant term. So these are the terms we will be getting when we solve these equation, when we get this equation. So a uh, general, which on simplification takes this form, okay, ax square plus 2hxy plus by square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0, where a, h, b, g, f, c, all of these are what? Coefficients, okay. So we are getting this picture that if we uh, find the equation of Koenig, there will be a general two degree equation. There will be a term of x square, term of x y, there will be a term of y square, term of x, term of y and some constant term, which is a general two degree equation in terms of x and y. Okay. So this equation is a very capable equation. Okay. This equation has many, many faces. Let me give you an idea. Like suppose find the equation of a conic of eccentricity 2, eccentricity is given as 2, whose focus is 1 comma 0 and directrix is x minus y equal to 0. Okay, so let's consider this is the directrix x minus y equal to 0. Okay, everybody. And there is some focus. So focus is the point 1 comma 0 which is given. 1 comma 0 is focus. Okay. There is some point P, a general point x comma y, or you can consider h comma k and in the end replace it by x comma y. Okay. So SP by PM is constant. That is the definition of conic that SP by PM is equal to E. Is equal to E. And that E is given as 2. So you need to remember this. SP by PM, SP by PM is equal to E. What is SP? S is the focus, P is the moving point. SP is the distance between these two points. PM is the distance of this point from this line. Okay, that's what we have done, right, earlier. So SP by PM is equal to 2. So SP is equal to 2 times PM. Okay, SP is equal to 2 times PM. Now, what is the distance between P and S? The distance between these two points is going to be under root of, under root of, x minus 1 whole square plus y minus 0 whole square, right? 2 times, what is pm? So if you want to find the distance of this p x comma y from this line, you put this point in the equation of line. So 2 times modulus of x minus y divided by under root of coefficient of x square plus coefficient of y square. Coefficient of x is 1, coefficient of y is minus 1, so 1 square plus 1 square that is root 2 in the denominator. Now, if you do a squaring on both side in the left hand side, we are getting, okay, on squaring both side, in the left hand side, we are getting x minus 1 whole square plus y square, okay, and the square of right hand side, 2 square is 4, and x minus y whole square divided by root 2 square will be 2, okay, this is 1 plus 1 which is root 2, root 2 square will be 2. Okay, everybody. 2, 2 is the 4. So, we are getting an equation. What is that equation? x minus 1 whole square, which is x square minus 2x plus 1 plus y square. This is the left hand side. Right hand side is 2 times x minus y whole square, which is x square minus 2xy plus y square. This is our right hand side. If you bring every term to the same side, okay, let's bring all these terms to the right hand side. So 2x square minus x square, that will give us x square. Here we have 2y square minus y square, that will give us plus y square. Then we have term minus 4xy, okay, minus 2 into minus 2, minus 4xy. This 2x goes to the right hand side, that will be plus 2x. And this plus 1 goes to the right hand side, that will be minus 1 is equal to 0. This is the equation we are getting. Which is what? This is a general 2 degree equation in two variables. There is a term of x square, y square, x, y, x constant. Okay. The coefficient of y is 0 in this equation. So this is the equation of our given conic. This is the equation of our given conic. And if I ask you, what does this equation represent? This equation is going to represent a hyperbola. Why hyperbola? Because eccentricity is greater than 1. If E is greater than 1, it is going to represent a hyperbola. And this is the equation of that hyperbola. 
So if they give us these three things, we can easily find the equation of conic. A similar type of equation I'm giving to you as a homework. Okay, focus is given as zero comma one, and this is the directrix. Directrix is given. Focus is given. Now, have they given eccentricity? Have they told us any information about eccentricity? Do we know what is eccentricity in this question? Okay. Do you guys know that? Yes, because they are asking us about find the equation of a parabola, and for a parabola, eccentricity is one. So eccentricity one. This is the directrix. This is the focus. Apply the condition for a conic, and you will get the equation of that parabola. Simple. Now second part, identifying the conic. Now we know how to form an equation. Now in this part, we'll be learning about. Okay, how to identify an equation? Suppose an equation is given. How do we identify that this equation is the equation of a parabola, or this equation is the equation of a, you know, ellipse? So they are giving us this equation. Suppose in the previous question, in the previous question, they give us the final result that this is the equation. They have given us that this is the equation. Now our task is to find what does this equation represent. We don't know about anything about eccentricity. Okay. Just by looking at the equation, just by analyzing the equation, how do we determine the conic? This is the next part, which is identification of a conic. Okay, let's understand that. Given a general second-degree equation in x and y, it represents a pair of lines or different conics depending upon the coefficient. It all depends upon the coefficients. What are the coefficients? For different different values of coefficient, we are going to get different different curves. Now. Delta. You must have seen this term in pair of lines. Okay, this is delta A B C in the diagonal, then H G F H G F. Okay, A B C in the diagonal. This is a symmetric determinant, or we can write the value of this determinant as A B C plus two F G H minus A F square minus B G square minus C H square. This is the value for delta. Now everybody. If this delta is zero, if this delta delta is zero, if this delta is zero, then it is going to represent equation of pair of straight line. Okay. First of all, if this comes out to be zero, now you need to remember what does what is a? A is the coefficient of x square. What is b? B is the coefficient of y square. What is c? C is the constant term in that conic. What is h? H is half of the coefficient of x y. The coefficient of x y is two h. H is half of the coefficient of x y. G is half of the coefficient of x, and f is half of the coefficient of y. Okay. If we put all these values over here. And we calculate the value of delta. If that comes out to be zero, see, if delta is equal to zero, then equation represent a pair of line. Then it is simply pair of lines. If delta is zero, okay, we have seen that in pair of straight line. You can watch the last lecture of straight line, and you can have better understanding about what is pair of straight line and what does delta represent. Okay, now. But if the value of delta is non-zero and h square minus a b is less than zero, then it is going to represent an ellipse. If h square minus a b is equal to zero, then it is going to represent a parabola. And if h square minus a b greater than zero, then it is going to represent a hyperbola. So first of all, calculate delta. If that is zero, it is simply pair of straight line. If delta is non-zero, then it is either going to be ellipse, parabola, or hyperbola, depending upon the value of h square minus a b. That if its value is negative, it is ellipse. If its value equal to zero, it is a parabola. If its value greater than zero, it is going to represent a hyperbola. Okay, let's solve few examples on that. What do the following equation represent? They have given us an equation. Now we need to find what does this equation represent. So first of all, I am going to calculate delta. Okay. For delta, write A B C in the diagonal, A B C, and H G F, H G F. Okay. Now, what's the value for A? A is the coefficient of x square. A is one. What is the value for B? 
B is the coefficient of y square which is minus 4. What's the value for C? C is the constant term which is minus 40. Okay. Now, uh, what is the value for H? H is half of the coefficient of x, y. As we can see, there is no term of x, y. So, H is equal to 0. Coefficient of x, y is 0 in this equation. Okay. What is G? G is half of the coefficient of x. What's the coefficient of x? Which is minus 2. Half of it will be minus 1. Right? In the general equation, the coefficient of x is what? 2G x, right? So, 2G is the coefficient of x and G is the half of coefficient of x, which is half of minus 2, minus 1. What's the value for f? f is half of the coefficient of y because coefficient of y is 2fy in the general equation. So, 2f is 16, f is 16 by 2, which will be what? 8. Now, if you put all these values in this equation, what do we get? A, B, C in the diagonal, A is 1, B is minus 4, C is minus 40. Okay. Then put the value for H, H is 0, G is minus 1, F is 8, 0, minus 1, 8. Okay. Now, simply calculate the value of this determinant. So, the value of this determinant, if you expand by first row, 1 multiplied by 160, minus 64 okay then 0 multiplied by this then minus 1 minus 1 multiplied by 0 minus 4 right okay so 0 minus 4 which is of course a non-zero thing which is of course not equal to 0 correct 160 minus 64 plus 4 is definitely not equal to 0. So, if delta is not equal to 0, it is not going to represent a pair of straight line. It is going to represent a parabola or ellipse or hyperbola. Now, which one it is representing? So, for that, uh, find the value of h square minus ab. h square minus ab. h is what? 0. Minus, what's the value for a? The value of a is 1. What is the value for b? b is minus 4. This is the value for h square minus ab, which comes out to be plus 4. If h square minus ab is plus 4, basically if it is positive, if h square minus ab is positive, then it means it is going to represent a hyperbola. Okay. If h square minus ab equal to 0, parabola. If that is negative, ellipse. And if it is positive, it is going to represent a hyperbola. So this is the entire theory. Now I want you to find about this one. Okay. Like what does this conic represent? For those of you who have studied about ellipse, they directly know that this is the equation of ellipse. x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to 1. But if we apply the same concept over here and try to find the equation, try to find what does this conic represent. So first of all, calculate delta. Okay. In delta, there is a, b, c in the diagonal, a is 2, b is 3, c is minus 6. Apart from that, okay, let's solve it over here only. Apart from that, everything else is 0. h, g, f, h, g, f, because there is no term of x, y, there is no term of x, no term of y. Apart from that, everything else is 0. So, if we calculate the value of delta, it is non zero, right? 2 times 3 minus 6. Okay. So, delta is coming out to be non-zero. Hence, it is going to represent a parabola or ellipse or hyperbola. Now, calculate the value of h square minus ab. What's the value for h? The value of h is 0. Minus, what's the value for a? The value of a is 2. The value of b is 3. So, h square minus ab is minus 6, which is less than 0. Hence, it is going to represent an ellipse. Okay. So, I hope all of you have learned that how to identify a conic. This question I am going to give you as your homework. Try to find what does this equation represent. Okay. What does this equation represent? First of all, calculate delta. If delta is 0, it is pair of straight line. And if delta is non-zero, then it is either a ellipse or hyperbola or parabola. Moving ahead. Now, let's get started with our first conic which is parabola now we will pick the conic named parabola and study in complete details about its standard equation its parametric form position of a point with respect to a parabola 
position of a line with respect to a parabola in this topic we'll be learning about tangent then focal chord and focal distance then normal then chords and some important properties of parabola these are the things we are going to cover not in this lecture in this lecture we'll only cover about its standard equation which is the very important portion then in upcoming lectures we'll be covering all these topics okay now standard parabola what is standard parabola what do we mean by standard so standard parabola is a parabola whose axis is either horizontal or vertical whose axis is either horizontal so this parabola is either going to be a horizontal parabola this is a standard parabola why because its axis is horizontal okay this is a standard parabola whose axis is vertical like this one its axis is vertical this is a standard parabola or downward this is a standard parabola rightward or leftward so either rightward or leftward or upward or downward these types of parabola are known as standard parabola okay so first of all let's learn about the equation of standard parabola then we'll be learning about okay like this parabola is not standard why because as we can see its axis is not horizontal or vertical this is not a standard parabola right okay now first of all we'll be learning about standard parabolas having vertex at the origin a parabola whose vertex is at the origin okay standard parabola whose vertex is at the origin okay everybody now so y square is equal to 4ax y square is equal to 4ax this parabola looks like a rightward parabola okay this is the equation of the parabola y square is equal to 4ax as you can see as you can see that its focus is at a comma 0 and its directrix is minus a comma 0 this is the directrix of this parabola okay its vertex is at the origin its vertex is at the origin now few things you need to learn about this parabola that if y square is equal to 4x if you want to draw this suppose if i want you to draw y square is equal to 8x okay Suppose you don't know anything about conic section, you don't know about anything, you just need to plot this curve, that how this curve is going to look like. So the basic idea is that x should always be positive, right? We are going to see the graph only towards the positive direction of x axis, x can't be negative, x can't be minus 1 over here, because if x is minus 1, y square will be minus 8. And y square is equal to minus 8, it's not possible. Square of a real number can't be negative. Okay, so x has to be positive. If x is 0, y is also 0. If x is 0, y is also 0. Okay, for one value of x, we are getting two different values of y. Suppose if I put the value of x as 2, y square is equal to 16, y is equal to plus minus 4. So that's what we are getting that this is passing through 2 comma 4 as well as this is passing through 2 comma minus 4 right if i put x as 2 y square is equal to 16 so for one value of x we are getting two different values of y for one value of x we are getting two different values of y so this is the equation of the parabola y square is equal to 8x this is how this parabola is going to look like okay so y square is equal to 4ax, this parabola is going to look like a rightward parabola. Okay, everybody, clear? Now, important things, some important things about this parabola. First of all, the focus is going to be at the point a comma 0. Like if I talk about this one, y square is equal to 8x. So comparing these two, what's the value for 8? The value for 8 is 4a. Compare it with y square is equal to 4ax. So 4a is equal to 8, a will be equal to what? 2. So its focus is going to be, see always remember, that focus is at 8 distances from the vertex. Where is focus? 
focus is at a distance from the vertex focus is at a distance from the vertex and directrix is at a distance on the opposite side so this is the focus 2 comma 0 okay and directrix is at two distance ahead okay this is the directrix x is equal to minus 2 so for this parabola focus is at 2 comma 0 and directrix is the line x is equal to minus 2 this is the line and this point p is moving in such a way that is distance basically you take any point on this curve you take any point on this curve like suppose if i take 0 comma 0 its distance from focus its distance from directrix is same you take any other point over here its distance from focus and its distance from directrix is going to be same you take any point wherever its distance from focus its distance from directrix is going to be same okay it is going to follow every point on this curve is going to follow this property the distance from directrix and distance from focus is same because sp pi pm is equal to 1 in case of parabola okay everybody now few important points that length of latest rectum is equal to 4a length of latest rectum now let me remind you again what is latest rectum latest rectum is a double ordinate or it is a chord which is perpendicular to the axis and pa passing through the focus a comma zero so the x coordinate at this point is a basically right so what will be the y coordinate if i put the value for x as a y square barabar 4 a square y will be plus 2a or minus 2a these are the end points of later sectum a comma 2a and a comma minus 2a are the end points of the later sectum and now we can observe that this total length plus 2a minus 2a the distance between these two points is going to be 4a so this is going to be the length of later sectum which is what that is 4a for a parabola okay simple in other words uh, for this parabola y square is equal to 8x the length of later sectum is simply going to be 8 because 8 is 4a right so just the coefficient of x coefficient of x is going to determine the length of later sectum for this one length of later sectum is what 8 length of later sectum is 8 for this one now y square is equal to minus 4ax this is going to be a leftward parabola okay y square is equal to minus 4ax this is going to be a left leftward parabola only towards the negative side of x axis this is also passing through the point 0 comma 0 okay the value of x is going to be negative because y square has to be kept positive to compare it we can think about y square is equal to minus 8x y square is equal to minus 8x if i draw this curve i know that this curve is going to pass through the point 0 comma 0 and this is going to be towards negative side of x axis this is how this curve is going to look okay leftward parabola okay now so again the same thing is going to follow over here that focus is a distance towards this side this is going to be a focus and directrix is going to be a distance towards the right hand side okay towards the parabola we are going to get the focus against it we are going to get the directrix okay now because directrix is a vertical line equation of this directrix is going to be x is equal to a it's a vertical line right its equation is going to be x is equal to constant now what's the value for a over here compare it with y square is equal to minus 4ax if you compare it with y square y square is equal to minus 4ax if you compare these two we can see that yes 4a is equal to 8 a is equal to 2 for this parabola the value of a is going to be 2 so moving two units towards the left hand side minus 2 comma 0 is going to give us what focus moving two units to, towards the right hand side x is equal to 2 is going to be a directrix now what's the length of later sectum length of later sectum is still 4a 4a is going to be the length of later sectum now the value of 4a is 8 
नॉट माइनस एट लेंथ कांट बी नेगेटिव सो वैल्यू ऑफ फोर ए इज एट सो लेंथ ऑफ लेटेस्ट एक्टम इज गोइंग टू बी एट इन दिस सिनेरियो ओके सो वी हैव लर्न अबाउट हॉरिजोंटल We have learned about right word or left word parabola, which are horizontal parabola. If you observe in a horizontal parabola, there is a quadratic in terms of y, and in a vertical parabola, there will be a quadratic in terms of x. Right? X square is equal to four ay. This is the standard equation of an upward parabola passing through zero comma zero. Upward parabola passing through zero comma zero. Its equation is x square is equal to four ay. Okay, here now y has to be positive, so that is why it is only towards positive direction of y-axis. X can be negative or positive. Like for an example, x square is equal to sixteen y. Let's talk about this. This is going to be a upward parabola. This is going to be an upward parabola, right? Why it is going to be an upward parabola? Because y has to be positive. For one value of y, there will be two different values of x. Suppose if I put y as one, x will be plus minus four. So this is passing through one comma four, and sorry, if I put the value of y as one, x can be four or x can be minus four. So it is passing through four comma one and minus four comma one, as you can observe. So it is symmetric about y-axis. This parabola is symmetric about y-axis. Now the same thing is going to happen here again. That focus is a unit towards this side, and directrix is a unit towards the opposite side. Now what's the value for a? Compare it with x square is equal to four a y. So four a is equal to sixteen. If four a is sixteen, a is going to be four. So four unit upward direction that is going to give us zero comma four. This is going to be focus a unit downward direction. This is directrix. Directrix is always perpendicular to the axis. Axis and directrix are always perpendicular to each other. This is the axis of parabola. Hence, this is going to be the directrix of that parabola. Okay. Now equation of this directrix because this is a horizontal line, y is equal to constant will be the equation. Okay, four unit downward, so this point is going to be zero comma minus four. Y is equal to minus four is going to be the equation of this directrix. Now the same thing is going to follow over here that length of later sectum is again four a. So if they ask us what is the length of later sectum, sixteen, sixteen is the length of later sectum. Are we clear? Now, x square is equal to minus four a y. This is going to be a downward parabola. Okay, a quadratic in terms of x is going to be a vertical parabola, either upward or downward. A quadratic in terms of y is going to be a rightward or leftward parabola. Okay, just keep these things in your mind. Now, an example on this will be x square is equal to minus y. Let's say x square is equal to minus y. This is going to be a downward parabola, everybody. Okay. X square is equal to minus y. It's going to be a downward parabola. Where is the focus of this parabola? A unit distance towards this side is going to be the focus. A unit towards this side is going to be the directrix. So this is going to be a directrix, and here we have focus. Now, what's the value for a? Now, if you compare these two equations, x square is equal to minus four a y, x square is equal to minus y. If you compare these two equations, you can see that on comparing with x square is equal to minus four a y, minus four a is equal to minus one. Basically, four a is equal to one. A is equal to one by four. So, one by four unit downwards, we are going to get focus. So that will be zero comma minus one by four. This is the this is going to be the point because it is on y axis. X coordinate will be zero. One by four unit upwards, which is y is equal to one by four. This is the equation of directrix, and we can comment that yes, length of later sectum is four a. This is the length of later sectum, okay, which is one. Now. Draw the following parabolas and mark their focus, directrix, and length of later sectum. We have just done this question. I want you to try this question again. 
we have just done this question as well okay i want you to try this question again x square is equal to 16y this is also done x square is equal to minus 8y this is also done right now <clears throat> Consider the following equation for a greater than zero and remember their graph. Suppose if I shift the, if this is the equation which is given, y minus k whole square is equal to four a times x minus h. So this equation and this one, y square is equal to four a x. What is the similarity and dissimilarity between these two equation? Compare these two equation. The only difference is. In place of y, we have y minus k. In place of x, we have x minus h. Everything else is same. Its vertex is 0 comma 0 because 0 comma 0 satisfies this equation. But h comma k is going to satisfy this one. In place of x, if I put h, in place of y, if I put k, I am getting 0 is equal to 0, right? So the only difference is that its vertex is 0 comma 0. But its vertex is going to be h comma k. So this is again going to be a rightward parabola because it is a quadratic in terms of y. It's going to be a rightward parabola having the vertex at the point h comma k. Okay, having the vertex at the point h comma k, a rightward parabola. Focus is going to be a unit towards this distance, and directrix is going to be a unit towards this side. Okay, let me give you an example on this. Let's directly go to the examples. Y minus 2 whole square is equal to 4 times x minus 3. I'm just going to look at this equation in this format. Y square is equal to 4ax. Okay. These two equations are very similar. Okay. This is a rightward parabola. This is also going to be the same rightward parabola. The value of 4a. Okay. What's the value for 4a? The value of 4a is 4. The value of 4a is equal to 4. So the value of a is going to be 1. So let's draw this parabola. y minus 2 whole square is equal to 4 times x minus 3. The vertex of this parabola is going to be at 3 comma 2. 3 comma 2 is a vertex and rightward direction. So this is the parabola having the vertex at 3 comma 2 and a rightward parabola. Okay. Because that x is equal to 3, y is equal to 2, we are getting 0 equal to 0. So this is the parabola passing through the point 3, comma 2 and this is a rightward parabola. Okay, everybody. Now, where is the, this is going to be the axis of the parabola. Directrix is going to be perpendicular to the axis. 3, comma 2 is going to be the vertex. Directrix is perpendicular. A unit towards this direction is going to be directrix. A unit towards this direction is going to be focus. This is the question. We need to find where is focus, where is directrix of this parabola. Okay. So the value of A is 1. On comparison, we can see that 4A is equal to 4. Value of A is going to be 1. So 1 unit towards the right direction. If I'm moving 1 unit towards the right hand side, its x coordinate is going to increase. Here the x coordinate is 3. Here the x coordinate is going to be 4 y coordinate will be 2 everywhere on this line because it's a horizontal line y coordinate is same everywhere so 4 comma 2 is focus okay if i move one unit towards the left hand side the x coordinate over here is going to be 2 y coordinate is also going to be 2 are you able to observe that y coordinate everywhere on this line is same y coordinate over here 2 over here 2 y coordinate over here 2 if we are moving left or right only x coordinate is going to change if i am moving towards right x coordinate increased if i am moving towards left x coordinate decreased okay so this is the focus what's the equation of the directrix the equation of directrix is x is equal to constant vertical line that is why its equation is going to be x is equal to constant now what's the x coordinate on this line the x coordinate on this point is 2 everywhere on this line x coordinate is going to be 2 so this is the line x is equal to 2 if they ask you what is the equation of axis the equation of axis is y is equal to 2 
हॉरिजोंटल लाइन पासिंग थ्रू टू कॉमा टू इट्स इक्वेशन इज वाई इज इक्वल टू टू वर्टिकल लाइन पासिंग थ्रू टू कॉमा टू इट्स इक्वेशन इज गोइंग टू बी एक्स इज इक्वल टू टू सो दिस इज डायरेक्ट एक्स ओके दिस इज फोकस एंड लेंथ ऑफ लेटेस्ट रेक्टम दैट इज सिंपली फोर ए विच इज फोर फोर ए द वैल्यू ऑफ फोर ए इज फोर ओ वही सो दैट इज द लेंथ ऑफ लेटेस्ट रेक्टम आर वी क्लियर सिंपल लाइक दिस इक्वेशन x minus 3 whole square is equal to minus 8 times y minus 1 mm. so i'm going to compare this equation with again x square is equal to minus 4ay i'm going to compare these two equation in place of x i have x minus 3 basically in place of x we have x minus 3 in place of y we have y minus 1 okay the value of minus 4a is minus 8 The value of minus 4a is equal to minus 8. Basically, 4a is equal to 8. This is the length of later sectum. Now, because this is the quadratic in terms of x and x square is equal to minus 4ay, this is going to give us a downward parabola. Correct? It's going to be a downward parabola, right? It's going to be a downward parabola with having the vertex at the point. See when x बराबर थ्री and y is equal to वन जीरो इज इक्वल टू जीरो इज गोइंग टू हैपन इन दैट सेनेरियो तो बेसिकली दिस इज पासिंग थ्रू द पॉइंट थ्री कॉमा वन दिस इज पासिंग थ्रू द पॉइंट थ्री कॉमा वन दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द वर्ड एक्स ऑफ दिस पैराबोला ओके इफ दिस इज द वर्ड एक्स दिस इज द एक्सिस ऑफ द पैराबोला ओके इज गोइंग टू बी द एक्सिस ऑफ द पैराबोला and if this is the axis this is going to be the directrix of the parabola a line which is perpendicular to the axis that is going to be directrix so focus is going to be a unit downwards and directrix is going to be a unit upwards that's the scenario what's the value for a if 4a is equal to 8 a is going to be 2 so if you move two units downwards you are going to get focus so from the 3 comma 1 If you move two units downward, basically subtract two units from the y coordinate of this point. Y coordinate is going to change now when we are moving upward or downward. Only y coordinate changes in that case. So the y coordinate over here is one. Y coordinate at this point is one minus two. Okay, two units downward. So three comma minus one. X coordinate is going to be three everywhere on this line. Because it's a vertical line, x coordinate is three everywhere on this line. Now, if, if I move two units upward, if I move two units upward, okay, what's going to be the coordinate of this point? X coordinate is still going to be same. Y coordinate is going to increase by two units, so one plus two that will be three. This is the y coordinate of this point. Three comma three is the point. So equation of the directrix which is a horizontal line having the y coordinate as 3 so y is equal to 3 is going to be the equation of directrix so that's what they are asking us about the equation of directrix the focus and length of later sectum which we already know which is equal to 4a which is equal to 8 so this is the length of later sectum are we clear now i want you to try this question in your homework okay this is your homework question everybody Try this equation in your homework. Y square minus two y minus four x plus nine equal to zero. So try to express this equation in this format. Okay, make a quadratic, make a perfect square in terms of y, and let me know what does this equation is going to represent. We are going to discuss this equation in the next class. Till then, I want you to think about this equation, and we are going to be discussing this in the next session. okay and another one this question again equation of the directrix of the parabola this is again your homework question and we are going to be discussing it in the next session okay everyone so that's it for today's session we are going to continue our discussion about the standard equation of parabola in the upcoming session till then this is your maths teacher kunal marker signing off tata bye bye have a great day everybody